everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Recently there have been a number of major developments in the Wheel of Time TV show that have me very excited and I wanted to do two things in this video. First, I wanted to go over everything of note that we have learned about the show so far, summarizing all of the major hires and the major news. Then I want to let you know why I believe that you should be very excited. However, before hopping into the meat and potatoes of the video, I want to thank Audible.com for being such a wonderful supporter of my channel. Many of you have already taken advantage of the offer they are giving to my viewers, but if you haven't yet done so, make sure you pay attention here. Audible.com is the largest marketplace for audiobooks out there with thousands and thousands of titles to choose from. I have a passion for fantasy books, but also with leadership and self-development as well. My latest download on Audible is Leader Shift. 11 Essential Changes Every Leader Must Embrace by John Maxwell, one of my favorite authors. Obviously, I also have all the Wheel of Time books as well as many others. You can get a free audiobook from audible.com with no catch. It's really simple. Go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nabless and sign up for a one month free trial. You'll get an audiobook that you can keep regardless of whether you choose to keep the service or not. And just by signing up for the trial, you are greatly supporting the channel. So let's throw up a spoiler warning for this video. This video will carry a spoiler rating of green, meaning there will be no spoilers of any kind. You should be fine with watching the video if you haven't completed the books. I will be mentioning some very, very light general concepts from the books, but nothing that will spoil anything for you, and nothing that you can't get from descriptions and synopsis of the book series. I will say that if you don't want anything about the show spoiled at all, you may want to check this out later, as I will be doing some speculation on the length of the seasons and what episodes we already know are going to be a part of the first season. So with that out of the way, Let's get into what we know so far about the upcoming Wheel of Time TV show. Let's start with the basics about the production. The show is being produced by Sony Pictures Television in conjunction with Amazon Studios as the network that is funding and broadcasting the show. In some of my previous videos on this subject, I go into depth about how Amazon typically funds their shows and how they make money off of the shows they produce, which is actually a very interesting topic as it's different to services like Netflix and HBO. Because of the way they monetize, they tend to be more free with their pocketbooks on newer shows. If you want to check out those videos, I'll have the links in the description below. But let me say a few quick things about Amazon Studios being behind the show and what it will mean going forward. Three current Amazon Studios television shows that have seen success are Man in the High Castle, Jack Ryan, and The Marvelous Mrs. Mizell. Jack Ryan received $8 million per episode for a budget, and it's like a movie when you watch it. Man in the High Castle got $11 million per episode, and that's for its last season. Amazon will absolutely spend money to promote promote these properties, and none of those shows had the built-in audience that Wheel of Time will when it releases. Wheel of Time has sold more than 90 million copies worldwide. And believe it or not, there are still Wheel of Time fans out there unaware that a show is even being made. I run into them every day. So the next part of this is how Amazon advertises for these shows. For instance, last year was the year that Jack Ryan debuted on Amazon. They ran a full-length advertisement promoting the show during the Super Bowl, the most watched television program of the year with the most expensive ad cost. They also advertise in movie theaters and on regular television. For instance, I just saw X-Men Dark Phoenix the other day in the movie theater, and there was a one-minute advertisement for the new miniseries Good Omens on Amazon based on the popular book series. With the show filming in September of this year, I would not be at all surprised to see a full-length Super Bowl ad in 2020, as well as a full-on marketing blitz. That's just what Amazon does. Point is, Amazon will promote the show a lot and won't be afraid to spend money on it. They are really trying to create the next Game of Thrones type phenomenon. I believe the show will have an audience, and it will be really big to start, so the question will be, will the show be any good? Well, let's take a look at some of the folks behind the production. The first person selected after Harriet McDougall, the wife of Robert Jordan, announced that the books would be made into a television show was Rafe Judkins. Rafe was announced to be the showrunner for The Wheel of Time, meaning that he will have control of the creative direction 
as well as overseeing the production. In addition to being the showrunner, he will serve as one of the head writers for the show as well. So what do we know about Rafe Judkins and what has he worked on in the past? Rafe was a former contestant on Survivor, moving to Hollywood after leaving the show to pursue a career in writing. Rafe began writing for a very short-lived television show starring Christian Slater called My Own Worst Enemy. He left there and became one of the lead writers for the very well-reviewed show Chuck, where he wrote five episodes for the third season. The show was very, very well reviewed. From there, Rafe had a short stint writing for the Netflix horror show Hemlock Grove before becoming a writer on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for seasons one and two. Both seasons were very well reviewed and he received praise for his writing, especially the episodes he was featured as a writer for. He is also credited for being a producer for season one and a supervising producer for season two. Harriet selected Rafe after interviewing many people to write for the show using the same process she used to select Brandon Sanderson to finish the novel. Rafe is a super fan of The Wheel of Time, and this was essentially a dream job for him. Harriet has stated publicly that she was very pleased to have him, and that he was the perfect choice to lead the show, and that he would be consulting with both her and with Brandon Sanderson. Rafe has been very active up until recently with the Wheel of Time community on Twitter. I believe Amazon has clamped down on his ability to share about the series, but he's still worth a follow on Twitter and Instagram as he does post pictures with some of the other people behind the show that we will talk about here in a moment. I'll put a link to his Instagram. Instagram and Twitter in the description below. Rafe has hired a team of writers that have been very busy. So let's take a look at the writers behind the show that we know of so far. The first writer that we're going to take a look at is Amanda Kate Schumann. She has written with Rafe previously on Chuck and they're very good friends. She's coming off a recent writing stint on The Following and the show The Blacklist, which I have to say is a very good show and the writing is very well done. She is a very strong hire. Celine Strong is listed as a staff writer, which means she won't be credited as writing episodes, but is more of an assistant writer on the show. This is her first gig writing for television, as she had comes from a background as being a playwright before being hired by Rafe. Paul and Michael Clarkson are identical twins that were both hired by Rafe to write for the show. They are absolute Wheel of Time superfans, publicly posting about the books years ago when A Memory of Light came out. They actually went to a restaurant and read in silence together and posted it on Facebook. They recently served as consultants on the His Dark Materials show and helped write the show's C by Apple in the feed from Amazon. One of the more recent hires on the writing team is Dave Hill. This is an outstanding hire, as he wrote for Game of Thrones for most of its seasons. He wrote some of the great episodes for the Game of Thrones, and his experience writing on that show will be invaluable to the Wheel of Time. The last writer that we know of right now is Justine Yule Gilmer. She is a veteran movie and television writer, having written for Home and Away, the 100, and most recently one of my favorite shows, Into the Badlands. She is a writer known for her knowledge of fighting and battle scenes. She's very into swords, MMA, and boxing. Just watch Into the Badlands to get an idea of how she writes fighting, as the show is basically just one big fight. I am very excited about the combination of experience, love for the source material, and diversity on this writing team. Dave Hill was an excellent addition, as well as Justine Gilmer. While I can't say I'm 100% the writing is going to be incredible, I believe based on the comments we got recently from Brandon Sanderson about the scripts that he has read, that we're going to get some quality writing, as he approved of what he read. In addition to hiring the writers, Rafe has also hired Sarah Nakamura as a book consultant for the series. Sarah has read the books more than 30 times, which puts me to shame. She also served as the registration director for JordanCon for years, so she's a big part of the community. Make sure to give her a follow on Twitter as well. I'll put that in the description below. We also have a casting director for the show and Kelly Valentine Hendry the owner of a casting company called KVH Casting, based out of London. They have done the casting for The Last Kingdom, Extinction, Fleabag, Broadchurch, and Harlots, many produced by the BBC and very high quality programming. She is very well known as a casting director, and it likely tells us that there are going to be many British actors within the series. There's actually an email you can send casting suggestions to Kelly or offer yourself up. Send your suggestions to submissions at whatcasting.com. In addition to a casting director, we also now have a head costume designer for the show. Isis Mussenden, I probably butchered that, has been hired to create the costume design for the series, which will be a huge undertaking given the size of the world of the Wheel of Time. I cannot stress to you how important and how good of a hire this is based on what I can find about her. She is an award-winning costume designer, one of the best in the business. She designed the costumes for the Chronicles of Narnia movies, American Psycho, 
Shrek on the basis of sex, Masters of Sex, The Wolverine, as well as 51 other movies or television shows. She's been around for years and has been nominated and won BAFTA awards as well as other industry awards for her work. It may not be a huge thing, but hires like this mean they are taking this very seriously and it has me excited. Another hire recently was that of Karen Gulikis as the visual effects supervisor. Sorry if I butchered that name. We all know that the way channeling and the way Shadow Spawn are portrayed on screen will either scream of quality or lack of quality. She is one of the most respected visual effects people in the business and her list of credits is outstanding. She is responsible for the effects in Looper, The Green Lantern, 10,000 BC, The Day After Tomorrow, Spider-Man, Godzilla, The Fifth Element, Titanic, True Lies, Last Action Hero, among many others. These are very heavy visual effects style movies. Regardless of whether you think of the quality of the writing in those movies, the effects were outstanding. And then the most recent hire, and another one that very much excites me is that of Nick Dudman. Nick has been hired to create makeup and animatronic effects for the show. He is most known for his work on all of the Harry Potter films, winning multiple BAFTA nominations and even an Oscar nomination for his work. He has worked on The Empire Strikes Back, Superman 2, Interview with a Vampire, Willow, Judge Dredd, Star Wars Episode One, The Mummy, The Mummy Returns, and The Fifth Element. The guy has done a lot of outstanding work, and what has me the most excited is that he is known for using practical effects mostly, which is something that I wanted to see done for Shadow Spawn, rather than simply relying on CGI. One of the last major hires, and the one I am the most excited about, is that of Uta Brezowitz as the director for the first two episodes of the series. If you don't know who she is, she is literally one of the best directors on television out there. Having been associated with literally some of the best TV shows of all time, including the one that I believe to be the best television show of all time. She directed my favorite episode of Westworld Season 2 and Kikasuya. She has directed two episodes of the upcoming Season 3 of Stranger Things. She has directed episodes of Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, The Defenders, Altered Carbon, which is amazing, The Deuce, The 100, Orange is the New Black, and most importantly, the best show of all time, the Wire. She has a history as a cinematographer and being one of the best in the business there as well. She frames shots masterfully and I could not be more excited that she will be directing The Wheel of Time. Knowing her background in cinematography, it makes me excited for how she's going to film that opening shot of Tam and Rand walking down the quarry road. I get goosebumps just thinking of watching that for the first time. So that's who's been hired, but what else do we know? Well, filming starts in Prague in the Czech Republic in September of this year. So only months away. There will likely be other locations, but this is the one that we currently know about, and it's where Rafe has moved that writing team. There have been four released episode titles, and one that we could sort of see in a picture that hasn't officially been released. So here are some minor spoilers if you don't want to know anything, but the first episode is called Leave Taking, written by Rafe himself. The second episode is Shadows Waiting, written by Kate Schumann. The third episode is A Place of Safety, written by the Clarkson Twins. The fourth episode is called The Dragon Reborn, written by Dave Hill. The fifth episode episode is completely unknown right now, and the sixth episode has an unconfirmed title of The Flame of Tarvalin with an unknown author. Without getting into spoilers from the books, I can tell you that it appears based on this pacing around the episode titles that we are going to see books one and two condensed into the first season. This should give us a very fast-paced book series and should hook new viewers. The last thing I want to hit on before I give my analysis is Rafe's Q&A from a couple months ago. Before Rafe was forced to stop talking to the community, he did a Q&A with the fan base through Twitter where he answered many of the questions about how the show would be adapted. I wanted to mention a few of them here to give you an idea of what we know so far. Obviously all of this is subject to change, but here's basically a summary of what he said. Rand's relationship with Min, Elaine, and Avienda will be different from the books. Rather than polygamy, as it is in the books, he said he was more intrigued by the idea of polyamory. Basically what that means is, is rather than all of them loving Rand, they may all love each other. Or at least individuals may love each other. This is an interesting change. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it, but I never really cared for all the girls fawning over Rand anyway, so this could be interesting. I don't think it's a big change for the plot, and it may be a little bit less sexist that they're all after him. Who knows? There will be more identified LGBTQ characters shown. There were some in the books, but they were all sort of glossed over. But he's basically saying that we will know who they are rather than them being ignored. I'm all for this change. Society has LGBTQ folks in it, guys. So does the Wheel of Time. 
They were written into the story, so I have zero issue with them being a part of the story. He said channeling will be shown on screen, with us actually seeing the weaves. Rafe said he really liked the way that magic was done in Doctor Strange. Well, I'm a huge fan of this. I love the way Doctor Strange did magic, and I'm glad we're going to see the weaves. He said there will be scenes that happened off screen in the books that will be in the TV series. Another thing I'm excited for. There are characters like the Forsaken that will be enriched if we learn more about them and what they did off screen. He said that the braid tugging and smoothing of skirts will be kept to a minimum, but there is one braid tug in the first episode, which I gotta laugh at. The latter of the middle books will be condensed, most likely referring to Winter's Heart, Crossroads of Twilight, and maybe Knife of Dreams. Rafe's favorite characters in the series are Egwene, Grendel, and Mogidian. I love this also because it means two of my favorite Forsaken aren't going to get cut out and will have expanded roles, hopefully. Loghain's story will be expanded. I think this is a huge plus. I love Loghain and I'm super pumped to see more of his backstory and see him more active in the main story. Rafe said the TV show will not shy away from gender, sexual identity, and mental health issues as these are all addressed within the book series. Again, this is where Robert Jordan, albeit not perfect, was ahead of his time in writing all three of these things into his book series. I have zero issues with these being kept into the show. The episodes will be one hour long. Cool. Rafe is most excited to adapt Tam and Rand escaping through the Westwood, Winter Night, Tarwin's Gap, Toman Head, and Egwene's Captivity. Um, I'm pretty excited for all of those as well. Instead of the series focusing on light versus dark, Rafe views it as balance versus imbalance. I kind of like that distinction. Moraine will feature prominently in the show as evidenced by the blurb released by Amazon. We kind of already knew this, I think it'll start with a focus on Moraine and it will shift away from her. Rafe intends to make the show very adult, but accessible to all. So for a lot of you out there, I think this what this means is, is that they are probably not going to shy away from a lot of the nudity, a lot of the, a lot of the violence, but they probably are going to keep the graphic sex to a minimum. He also said there is a plan to highlight or emphasize or condense or cut the forsaken which i'm glad there's a plan for this uh what what they mean by that it doesn't necessarily he didn't indicate that he meant that they would cut some or that they would highlight some more but that there was a plan in place so i'm cool with that so guys that's basically everything that we know as of today so why should you be excited well for one i feel like there is a great set of people around the show at this point i couldn't be more excited for some of the hires rafe has made as these people are legit and it means that they are not sparing any expense and that they're going after quality some will point out that there's a lack of experience among the writers but i'm less worried about that for one they are simply adapting a book series that is complete and has more content in it than anyone could wish for. They will not be needing to create narratives of their own. What I have always been more concerned with was is that they put care into making the series quality. It looks like that isn't going to be an issue. Brandon Sanderson recently stated on Reddit that he has read the scripts and was really excited about the direction they were heading with the show. He said some of the changes are really good, and he believes that fans are going to like them a lot. He wouldn't have said any of this if he didn't believe things were going to be good. He would have just kept his mouth shut. All of this just has me excited, and we should be getting some more news here within the coming weeks. So I'm curious if any of this has you guys excited as well. It's okay to be cautiously excited about the show, but not be completely sold out. Many of us are super interested and afraid someone is going to come in and butcher our favorite story. So if you aren't excited, why aren't you? And if you are, tell me about what you're most excited for in the comments below. Please like the video if you're liking my Wheel of Time content, and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I release new stuff. I'm really trying to push out three videos a week right now. Also take a minute and check out my Patreon page where you can join my community community and get into the community discord server where I communicate regularly with a lot of you guys. Until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?